Hey everyone, my name is Eric Dorn. In today's video, allow me to talk about INTP subtypes. Let's talk about what INTPs look like under different circumstances. I have found four particular subtypes. One of them is healthy, and one of two of them, of them, of them are important. And the fourth serves a grounding role for the INTP. So. The INTP is an advisor, the INTP is an intellectual, a rational type, the INTP is uh, in many ways critical uh, thinking type, the INTP is a creative type, the INTP is an in many ways mastery or knowledge seeking type, and the INTP is a philosophical, theoretical type. So an INTP uh, is this type at their ideal when the environment supports it. But sometimes, of course, the environment doesn't support it. And sometimes due to mood and environment, uh, you may struggle to fully embody this archetype. Uh, it's hard to remain in this sense of flow, as you might call it, for an INTP. And uh, when that happens, there are two options. There is the overthinking child archetype. There is the uh, more overprotective parent archetype, and there is the more rival-oriented uh, grounding archetype for the INTP to balance out the INTP. The grounding influence comes from the INTP's ESFJ. Uh, the INTP has an inner ESFJ that they use to make sure that uh, when they come up with a new solution or a new theory, it fits with uh, present conditions, present information. With uh, You can apply the theory to understand things that just happened, and you can use this information to get a grasp of uh, how other people are doing and how it affects the world and how it affects the people around you. So often uh, the INTP uses the ESFJ mode to backtrack on a, in a way because uh, if you go a lot into INTP you might get anxious or you might get stressed out because what if your theory doesn't work in reality? What if you are just falling deeper and deeper into a rabbit hole? Or what if uh, the problem you're working on, uh, nobody wants it, nobody cares about it and it's uh, just a waste of time? Uh, so the ESFJ is completely about backtracking and making sure that when you've explored something uh, it fits with what people need. That's how you use it ideally. Uh, that's how it grounds you. It gives you that sense of yes, people do want this innovation or this theory or this technology or people do like what you're talking about. Um, but uh, at, it, at its worst, it can become like a begging for attention, uh, it can be like a constant rambling about your own theories and your own thoughts and uh, ignoring what everyone else says and just talking to yourself in a sense. Uh, it's a problem for INTPs that sometimes in the ESFJ grip that um, they become so uh, excessively in the need of attention and feedback from other people that it actually keeps them from working on their solutions and working on their theories. So be to let them be the, be the best thing possible. Uh, often that's how it, ESFJ can be like a grip. It can be like a anchor that keeps you from moving forward as an INTP. So often dealing with these anxieties in a healthy way is key. Uh, not letting uh, your anxieties about other people or about the world or about the uh, pragmatic situation uh, uh, become like some kind of uh, something that keeps you from pursuing your ideas and your thoughts and theories. I think INTPs are really good at coming up with reasons not to do anything. Uh, they're really good at uh, postponing action and uh, they do it by simply uh, overly obsessing about what other people think and being oversensitive to other people's opinion. Um, the INTP is, yes, not oblivious to other people, but overly sensitive to other people's uh, opinions. They keep, uh, they can become, uh, they can demand, depend very highly on other people's affection and care, and they can uh, use it as kind of a comfort pillow to keep them from work and from doing things they love and need. So, the two balancing archetypes for the INTP is the child and the parent archetype. And the uh, INTPs that are more young and more students are going to relate a lot more, a lot more to the child archetype. Uh, often it's like the fact that INTPs in school are a lot like INFJs. And this is kind of interesting because in school uh, the INTPs perspective, whereas a 
kid in relation to your parent. The INTP is so much more focused on other people's needs and thoughts and what other people think is right and wrong. Uh, often it's like the INTP lives their childhood completely dependent on what other people think is right and wrong. It's completely uh, dependent on what the group wants and what is best for the people. And uh, then when you finally get that sense of independence, that's like a big release from that grip in a sense. Uh, uh, the INTP can suddenly start uh, uh, devoting themselves to ideas and to problems that are their own. They can start exploring thoughts that uh, often other people didn't care about or that their parents uh, didn't appreciate. They can start going deeper into things. So that's also a sense of release, le relief for the INTP. Um, the parent archetype, however, can be the problem here because when you switch into that, often what tends to happen is uh, your grip from sensing and extrovert, uh, extroverted sensing becomes higher. The INTP, uh, who becomes more responsible and has to take care of other people and has to uh, be more pragmatic, gets into this grip of uh, the pragmatic, uh, the sense that uh, they become. Uh, so focused on new information, they become so focused on what's going on right now that they never get that time to sit down and work on their theories and their projects. Like, reality is pressing demand for attention, keeps becoming a distraction from the INTP from working on their theories and their thoughts and what they find interesting. So often, learning to balance and avoid this distraction and uh, being able to deal with it in a healthy way, not excess, excess, exactly by running away from it, but by being able to uh, take the time necessary, but not more, to dealing with reality's concerns. Uh, often if you want to uh, innovate, if you want to come up with new ideas or fix uh, problems in society, because often I find the INTPs are not driven so much by coming up with new uh, entrepreneurial projects or ideas, but more by fixing things that are wrong in society, correcting research that is misleading, dealing with fake facts, dealing with things that seem to be problematic in some way or form, fixing research, fixing problematic inventions, coming up with a way to improve on something that isn't working as good as it could. Um, if you want to succeed with this, you'll need to manage that uh, outside environmental stimulus. You need to balance that and make sure that you don't get overwhelmed by it and that you don't uh, uh, lose yourself in it. Um, it's also the case uh, that you have to balance uh, your more childish feeling judging function. Uh, I find that INTPs that are more childish, that uh, lose that um, that lose that sense of grasp of what is important to them. Uh, go more into this kind of work mode. An interesting thing to INTPs is that for INTPs, people are work. Uh, managing people, that's a chore, that's a duty, that's something you have to do uh, because you, other people depend on you to do it. Your parents expect you to be nice to other people, uh, your school or your boss requires you to get along with your co-workers and with your boss and themselves. So this is the real work to an INTP. It's not the work in itself, but it's the managing of the people and the social rituals and everything that happens that is truly work to an INTP. And um, so, I find that <laughs> this means that for the INTP, this work keeps them from their passion. If there's something in the INTP is passionate about, it's thinking and perceiving. And if uh, there's something that keeps them from their passion, it's people. It's uh, that uh, desire to be nice to others, to manage people, to not offend anyone, to speak in a way that allows you to be understood by others, to manage people. It's that that really grinds an INTP's gears, in a sense, really gets them uh, uh, away from what they find truly fun and, jo and enjoyable. Often, you know, the INTPs can get some gratification from it, but only the only gratification INTP gets from managing people is uh, that their boss gives them uh, a raise or lets them at least keep their job or that uh, they get a pat on their back. That's the only thing they can think of, like, it's yeah, that's nice. But that satisfaction goes away quickly. So if you're looking for like more permanent satisfaction, more permanent passion, you have to go into thinking and perceiving, you have to start engaging your problem-solving function, you have to start thinking critically about the world, you'll have to start looking at what you can fix, what you can solve, what you can improve, what you can make better. And 
I wouldn't worry so much about how much people are gonna like your innovations or how successful they're gonna be. It's not the first concern at least, it should be the last of your concerns. Uh, it should be the thing you consider as soon as you had a chance to go and truly immerse yourself with it. Uh, when you've done that, that's, then it's fine to start asking other people for their opinions on it, but don't let it block you from exploring it initially, because uh, sometimes being critical about something, a lot of people might not be as critical as you, and a lot of people might have come to accept and feel happy with what they have. But uh, when the, your innovation is ready, and when you've done something, they might definitely change their minds. Uh, often, when they get the chance, that's when it starts becoming popular, innovative, and the good. Like, you don't have to rush to that point. You just have to work on the innovation and connecting with other people who love innovation as much as you do, and uh, getting it out on the market, and then seeing what happens. Beyond that, um, it's also that question of what ES is for you. Um, yes, for an INTP, uh, extracted sensing is a distraction. Um, sensing and uh, judging is, a, in many ways, distraction for the INTP. It's that uh, often for the INTP, uh, this function keeps you from uh, thinking about the things that you're fascinated with. So going into a situation where you feel preoccupied with a, uh, a theoretical problem, uh, you'll still hear that your theory bouncing inside your head and you'll still be preoccupied with it. Or you'll feel like you're engaging with the world and you're doing everything, but you keep thinking about it. And the fact that you should be going into your interest, exploring your interest, learning about it, figuring out the problem that you've seen. So Learn to heed that call. Don't ignore it. It's nothing wrong with taking time to yourself to think about something. Um, just uh, eventually with time you will get better at communicating it with other people to make sure that they know that you are taking time to yourself and that you will be back and that there's nothing to worry about. That's the only thing to consider. Like uh, Over time people will get used to your need for alone time and they will learn to see it as something positive as well. So I hope this can help you understand uh, what an INTP goes through and what they try to balance and how different INTPs might look because you have those that will go more towards the child, work-oriented, sidekick-oriented uh, role and you'll have INTPs that go more towards the leader, boss, chief role, the parent role of... Um, and finally you'll have those that are unhealthy. The ones that are going completely against their own needs and interests and engaging in things that they really don't like and want just for the sake of temporary satisfaction. So consider this, like what are you dealing with as an INTP? What are your challenges and how can you manage to balance your flow and find your flow and hold on to it? That's my thoughts for today and I hope you all enjoyed this video and as always, if you like it, leave a comment, share and subscribe. And for now, goodbye.